Hello, happy Wednesday. Is it the 2nd of June already? Golly, come on in. We're still in Camelot, you know. I thought, oh, what is all this traffic? Just going to ignore it now. Come on in. I've opened all the windows. It's very warm up here in the Shack Shack. Anybody there? Paul is in the building with you, if you are there. So hopefully he'll be able to tell me if the volume is working. That's why we're early to the party. So, uh, and then we will get started. Good morning, Anya. Oh, good. And the sound I'm sure is fine. Um, got batteries in. I've got a coffee today. I've got a real crowner of a headache. Don't know. Never mind. It's all right. Oh, look, everybody's in. All this beautiful weather and we're indoors. But there we are. It's only for an hour. A little bit of exercise for the mind. Hey, a little bit of, um, yeah. And I've got some quite nice little bits. You know, I was thinking about it because I was reading yesterday. I read a couple of comments on Facebook and there were a couple of ladies saying, oh, I haven't done the inking and I haven't done the penning and I, I'm behind with Camelot and, and I, don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to catch up. And then I thought, yeah, you'll catch up because I'm in the same boat, you know, and this is not about scrambling. It's not a master class. It's not us trying to perform. Nope. This is just about hanging out together and, uh, and learning a few tricks along the way. And that's what we're going to do today. And if we stay in Camelot the whole summer, then so be it. Nice place to hang out. We haven't even got to the horses yet. Mm -mm -mm. And today I thought we'd hang around the people, the flags and the sky. How's that? <laughs> Paul, sound is good. Thank you very much. So here we are. Is it 10 o'clock yet? Nearly. And then we'll get started. Mm. Good to have your company. Spinning today. Spinning like a top. I woke up spinning. It's just one of them things. You see, I'm not retired. <laughs> I'm trying to run a business remotely. Not so simple. But I've got great people helping me. And that is a, and that is a blessing. What does this stamp say? You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Right, come on then. Let's stamp it out. Let's have a bit of affirmation. You are beautiful. New ink pad. Yep. I love these sticker stamps. They are supreme. Brand new. That's what I want. <laughs> I've got new and brand new. <laughs> this is just so that everybody can get in the building while we're doing this. See, I could do this on post-its when I make notes to myself. I could go through, oh, don't do that though, Gray. I could go through all the post-its and make little notes to myself in the corner. Hey, little affirmation notes. Do you know what? That's not a daft idea. Because you'd have the you'd have the the mindful process of doing it. Here we go. You are beautiful. There you go. Nice. Huh? 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 See? You are beautiful. And then I could put it on there and on there. And I've put different ones. Great for be creative every day. And then I've turned a boring old pack of post-its into a very, very lovely affirmation. Yeah. Not a daft idea. You are beautiful. I'm going to use that one in a minute. I'm not feeling very beautiful, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right. I talked to Grace yesterday, FaceTime, and uh, she's, it's a month before she comes home, all things being well, fingers crossed, and so we've decided that we're going to lose a stone each in a, before she gets here. Doing it together is always easy. Together, we're better. Yeah, so see how it goes. Today, it begins. Black coffee. <laughs> I don't even like black coffee very much, but it reminds me that I'm on a diet. <laughs> right, we ready? Come on then. 
let's get started. And what we're going to do, we're going to hang out in Camelot for a little bit longer. I hope you're not bored with it. I mean, we keep weaving different tricks and techniques in. It's just a vehicle, isn't it? Okay, for our doodling sessions. So I thought what we'd do today is we'd finish up the people, the people, then we'd do the flags, and then I thought we'd look at the sky. So let me come in a bit tighter. Oh, hello. There we go. It's coming a bit tighter. You see that okay? I might come in a little bit tighter in a minute. So we're looking at the people first. And we're using colouring pencils to just colour them in. I like these people. I like their noses. How Did you finish yours? Have you already done yours? Oh, top of the class. So what I thought would be nice is I want to kind of, I want to make all the, the whole tapestry um, red and orange and white and grey and I've had, I've injected a little bit of green just because I think that will look good too so then it's just different levels of greys and blacks yeah and so I've added some I've added some um, colour how about you have you done yours yet so I added a little bit of colour added a little bit of white it's good practice for the flags anyway and, and what I'm going to do now is just add a little bit of grey work along here. So I've done my colouring. How about you? Have you done your colouring already? Tell me, tell me. Or tell Paul. Have you already done all your little people? Your royal party? Now the white pencils, I, if you see me grabbing this white Pergamano pencil, it's exactly the same pencil as the one that's in the Pergolina box. So don't think, oh, we've got a special one. Used to have them, and then the factory sent us these instead. So they're the same thing clearly, okay? This is not a different pencil, It just I just happen to have it. So just for the sake of confusion, I'll use this one. Or, of course, you've got, I see I've got loads of them because... Well, because, because I have. Um, but I've also got, look, this is when you know Barbara's overwhelmed when she just keeps sticking it in. Everything just goes in a, <laughs> in a Tupperware thing. Fine. So I just figure it, if I sling it all in here, at least I've got a remote chance of finding it. <laughs> oh, 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 but you know you're on a slippery slope when you've got another one on the go. <laughs> <laughs> oh mother right okay what have I got here I don't need that for a minute I need my white pencil oh actually what I was looking for was my, my white um oh God, we've got another one. I was looking for my white polychrome but I can't find it not to worry white's white they're just as good yeah so we need a white one in a minute because we're going to do some clouds this is going to look so pretty Right, so a bit of white, bit of colour. Have you done that so far? Are we neck and neck? What did I use for the skin? I used the pink. When you, if you've got the polychromos, there's a pink in there, but it's a little bit puff, puff powder pink, isn't it? Um, there's a flesh colour from, from Faber-Castell, which is very nice. So I'm just adding a little bit of flesh to the faces and the necks. And then what we'll do is we'll do a bit of grey work. And I've started it, but I want to show you what I mean. Get some grey pencils going. Now there's a set of 12 grey pencils. Paul, you, I'm sure you've got the link. Because what we did was we put a load of greys and there's a light blue and a sky blue and a, a really light pink, which we'll do for the skin. And gold and silver and copper and all that sort of colour, which isn't in the Perga liner box. Do you remember months and months ago? Because this box, it's all great, but it hasn't got any greys, which is rubbish, really. But there you go. Computer says no. We've tried hard. And then also, why reinvent the wheel if we've already got lovely polychromos? So you can buy these in a pack of 12, all different grey scale and nice colours. Important. The key ones... That will um, top up the pergoliners if they're what you've got. Right now, let's have a look at this greys. And what I'll do is, I'll just, you've got 
different greys. You've got light, medium and dark. Let's go with light, medium and dark, whichever one you fancy. So what have I got here? I'm using um, uh, warm grey 5, cold grey 3 and cold grey 2. That'll do. Yeah? Anything, anything to, to just put a little bit of shadow in. Warm grey, what else have I got here? What's this one? Cold grey three, same as that one, got more than one. Right, so what we're going to do, you see, to do a bit of grey work, is we're going to add a bit of depth with grey over the top of the colour. So what you do is you just, you look at the picture, do one little character at a time, I would. Let's go in a little bit tighter, shall we? So that you can see it, there we are. So what you're going to do is look and say, right, so if she's behind him, then possibly we should add a little bit of shadow here over the top of the colour. And rather than use colour, we can use grey because that will kind of tone it down. See, I could go in with, if she's got orange, I could go in just with a darker orange. But then it starts to look really, not gaudy, but if you tone down with grey, if you add depth with grey, what you'll find is it just tones all the colours down. So, so see that that now is clearly behind and you can always brighten up again with a little bit of white now if I take that light gray as well see I can add a little bit of grayness in here too right that's it just a little bit of gray now let's look at him okay so his hair we haven't done his hair I'm going to give him black hair there you go that's cool Black hair. I haven't given any of them eyes, and that's okay. It's art. Right, so I've got my pencils here, and then I'll go with the lighter, a, a grey, and I'll just add a little bit of shade where I think the shade would be. So in my opinion, it would be on that side of the face. Also, on her as well. Under the neck here, where the chin, see? Just a little bit of depth there. Right. So we're not going to spend an age on this. But you can see, you're just going to add a little bit of depth. If this is behind this one, then we maybe add a little bit of depth with the darkest grey just along this edge here, like that. See, and if you think you're making it too dark, like let's say here, I'm going to just add a bit of depth along there. If you think you're making it too dark, then enter your eraser pencil. Make sure it's not dirty. And then you can take the colour back out again, which looks really good as well. It's almost like a blender. It blends. There you go. Our neck's a bit disappearing. There we are. Right, now the king and queen, they're in white. I've decided to make them pop with a little bit of gold. So we've got to go white. Everybody all right? I dived into this, didn't I? It's all right. It's because I know I, I, there are loads, there's loads I want to do today with you. Right, now he's behind her, so we'll add a little bit of grey there. We'll add a little bit of grey on that side of his crown and a little bit of grey on that side of her crown. There, that looks pretty. And then her veil, or whatever it is that she's got, put a bit of grey in there. See, just building up that lovely layering. Neck, right, that'll do. Don't want to overcook it. Um, her neckline. Now, let me think. What do I think? Do I want to go white? If I go white. Okay, yeah, I like that. She's jumping right out. Now, when you go really white like that, sometimes you lose a little bit of the blackness. And then you just take your black pen again and redefine the line up. Let's have a look. I'm using... The, the thinnest one, 005. See, and then you go back in over the top. And straight away, it's as black as black again. So, same with his. I made, I put gold in, see? Let me show you. If I come in tight, you can see. I wonder if you can see the gold. Let's have a look. See the gold on his... I was going to call it a necklace, but I don't think that's quite what, right. See on the, the hat, on the, <laughs> on the crowns. God, Barbara Gray. 
Yeah, a little bit of gold, a little flash of gold with a pen. That's quite cool. Now on her hat, for example, on her headdress, because <laughs> I did a lot of white on there, I might want to redefine that pattern. So I'll just go back over and just lightly, that'll do. See on the red as well, we're going to put some grey in first. So we're working our way along here. Right, a little bit of grey, three different greys. You've got a light grey, a medium grey and a dark grey. And you just work your way along. Um, for example, in here might look good, a little bit of depth in there. So it's not so white. This is, this is good practice for what's coming up. So a little bit of grey. I think it's just creating a kind of an awareness. Here we go. Let's just do a little bit of depth there. A little bit of depth up there. See, so this is behind her. And we're going to add a little bit of depth. It just gives the whole picture more interest, really. There we are, look. Nice. That's better. See? What have I got? It's like the princess and the pea here. I've got something underneath. All right, there we are. Nice. Bit of depth along the back of that headdress. Hmm. She's got a white dress on, but she's got a red... A red hat. <laughs> there you go. That looks good. Yeah. I, I, I like this. Um, I think I want to keep the, the king and queen kind of uncoloured, if you see what I mean. It's a bit of artwork in his feather. Could always come back. And I think that's one of the things that you have to know, you know, when you're, uh, you know, like these young ladies this yesterday evening that were worrying that they hadn't done this and they hadn't done that and they weren't caught up. I thought, well... This is an ongoing process. You've got to give time time. It's, it's like embroidery. You're never going to finish your artwork in one session, you know. So, so relax and don't try to. Just use it like, um, like for what it, is, what it is intended, which is um, to go to calm the mind, relax. Just have a little place like a little calm place where you can go and you put your picture out and you've got your pencils and you can just, that's why they're in a boxy. So I just take them out of the box and I'm good to go. I haven't got to dig through all the different greys. This is an ongoing project for me, you know, and that's what I'm, and that's what I'm working on. Yeah. So, ah, oh, I was gonna, I forgot. There's loads of pottery. I had a really good result, really good. There were three mm, questionables, which I'm going to reglaze and refire, but the rest was really lovely. Oh, blast. I was going to bring a couple of pieces up. Um, if we get time, I might shoot downstairs quickly in the garage with my keys, grab a couple of pieces and bring them up to show you. Hey, shall I do that? Yeah. Black coffee. Okay, let's do the flags. Let's come on. Let's get in the zone. So we've done a little bit of grey work on there. Move all the pencils out of the way and start again. Right. All over to the left. Because I'm a lefty, see, it all starts over here and then it migrates. <laughs> and then it ends up on that side. Put it all back over there again. There you go. Um, right, now, so I think we'll go to a flag. And I want to show you what I've done, because I did it in rough first. The bus driver's been ahead a little bit. So let me show you what I've done on a bit of scrap, and then we can do it in real time. Right, so, so this is what I want to do with you today, see? So I'm going to take that flag there. I'm going to take that flag, and we're going to do the shading so that we get that lovely contrast. And then I thought we'd have a look at doing some clouds in the background. Because I think that, that's quite nice. It's quite, it's easy. It's easy when you know how. And, uh, and I thought that'd be really nice. So, so basically what we're concentrating on is the top part of our uh, tapestry. So let's have a look at this fella here. And we'll, we'll start, right? with 
get your white pencil first. Let's start with the white pencil. That's where we're going to start. You are beautiful. Right, white pencil first. Actually, I need to do that on a on a piece of what I'm working on so I can see what it's going to look like. There we go, look. I've got a bit of scrap. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at this thing, flag and banner. And we're going to decide, let's do both at the same time. I'm going to do that one orange and that one red. And what we'll do is we'll decide if the sun is hitting or the light is hitting on this side, let's put where it's going to be lighter. Right, let's do that. So I think that that's going to be light because the, the light's hitting it there. And then it's going to be light there, there and there. Right? Do you agree? And then I think it'll probably be light on this side here because it's going to fold around. So it'll be light there. And then it probably, as the light hits it there, it'll come around and it's, it looks to me like it's going to be light there. There. Yeah? Because that'll be dark. So it just gives you a kind of a... Now this time, that's going to be dark. So um, I think I'm right in thinking that the light's going to be here. And then that's going to be quite dark. Maybe there. Let's just put a little bit in there. Right. So it's just an awareness of light, isn't it? See? There. 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 That's going to be dark. There. And there. Now that'd be good. Now let's look at this one. Look at the next one. So again, if the light's coming down from the here, I reckon that that's going to be definitely lightest there. Let's get a start. I think there. I think definitely here. You can see the light will definitely be hitting here, won't it, at the top. There and there, do you think? Yeah, you can see, can't you? Because it's going to come down. Okay. I think the light will hit there. Yeah. And there and there. Right. Nice. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we've done that one. Next one. Let's go to a light orange now. So what oranges did you use for the so I've got I've got a couple of different oranges here. Pick the one that you used in the in here. I'm going to go with um, 109. Let's get a light colour in first. Now this orange, let's say that the, the colour now denotes where the shade is going to be. And don't worry, it won't be white in the end, but let's just, let's just have a look where the shade is going to be. So now what we're going to do, really lightly, when, when, you, when you do this, don't press hard. See, I've got a bit of a chisel going. See the chisel? In fact, I just saw them in my little box of tricks. Make a chisel with your sandpaper. There. Bingo. So sandpaper blocks, ideal for this, because when they get really worn out, I mean, you can clean them, to be honest. Look, with this, if I, there's still a lot of sand, sand on there. So if I wanted to, the only reason I've got three of them is because I can never find them. See? <laughs> but when this one gets really tired, you can use some of itself to clean it. So, for example, I can just clean it off like that. It's got plenty of grit still on it. Um, yeah, they're good. And then when it's absolutely had it, then you just peel the top one off and there's loads underneath. It's not like, look, I'll show you. Don't think, see here, there's all sandpaper layers. I think often people think it's just the one on top. But when you've had enough, see, I've already taken loads off. So you just pull the next one off, pull the next one off. See, there's even more in this one because it's new. Look, see, there's loads. I wonder how many there are. 12, 10, 12, quite a lot, you know. Last you a long time anyway. So the idea is, you see, it saves your pencils because when you, you want a chisel edge, a soft rather than a point. That's perfect now. Yeah, soft. 
to lots of us. We, we know all this. We've done this before, haven't we? But now, because it's softer, see, I can go in with that flat, like flat iron and I can just add a little bit of depth where I think highlights and lowlights, isn't it? Isn't it? There you go. So there's a lowlights there. There's a lowlights there. That's the lowlights in there. I've definitely got some lowlights in there where it's folded. It's under here, isn't it? So we put a little bit of orange in there. That's it. There's low lights in that one there, rolling into the white. Yeah. See, because it's a chisel, it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier. All right, this looks good. Okay. It doesn't take long. So you've got a really good thing is, of course, at the moment, it still looks, it looks a bit stripy now because we've got the white, but we've just put the high the highlights and we're just putting the white in for highlights right now take that same that same color and just in with circular motions go over the light just go over the whiteness so it's not stripy see changing the tone okay toning down that white you can always add a bit of white in a minute if you want to but you try you're trying to make it blend in so there we are. Nice. That's not bad, is it? Let's try a yellow. Uh, then we've done the yellow or the orange. That's easier because it's... Um, Paul tells me there's 10 strips on the sander. There you go. Thank you, Paul. The lighter the colour, the easier it is. Now, let's try the red one. Well, I've done the red one here, so this is like... So what I need to do is first of all make sure, see it's quite dark because it's, so I can do this until I get a, a chisel or I can take my sander. That's better. And now I've got a softer, yeah, 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 softer. And also remember, if you hold up the shaft a little bit further, then there's not so much pressure at the end. So the further up the shaft you hold the pencil, the lighter it will be too. Now, let's have a look. We're just going to put the low lights in now, aren't we? So this is definitely going to be a low light here. Yeah. See, because we're working with a darker colour now, the orange was easier. So this is ramping it up a bit now. So we're going to go slowly. We're going to just take... Remember we did this before and when we've been doing colouring where you do that kind of s sort of cradle to and fro. That looks good. Don't worry if it looks stripy. We're going to get rid of the stripe. That's it. This is definitely going to be darker here, isn't it? Now that's going to be lighter, but then this in here is going to be darker in my opinion. Definitely in there. Let's get some bread going. The thing about this is, it, none of it's written in stone. If you feel you've overcooked it, or you think, oh, that was way too dark. What was I thinking? Right? Then all you need to do is take your rubber, your eraser pencil, make sure it's clean. And if you want to take some colour out, then just... Take it back out again, see? The pink one will take it out. I've got some stuff on the, on the table. See, just take it back out. You can lift it. If I keep going, I'll, I'll lift it right back out again, see? Not that I wanted to. I just want to show you how you can. Right, back to the chisel. I'm going to add some of that depth in there again. Because this is going to be a really lovely, bright red banner flying in the wind we're gonna have it's gonna be a beautiful day sun shining but there are a few clouds nice just like today what's the weather like where you are come on then tell us where are you and what's the weather like where are you and what's the weather like come on tell us Right. Hmm. Let's take a bit of white now. 
See, that's quite stripy, isn't it? So let's take some white. And the object of the exercise now is to tone these back, back, like make the red less red and the white less white. <laughs> so what we've got to do is take the white and run over the, the red. Look, see how it pinks it up. Is that English? <laughs> I can't believe sometimes my English. I cannot believe sometimes my English, even the word order's all to pot today. Come on. So, okay, it is what it is. Are you going to join me this evening? We're doing a craft along, aren't we? That'll be fun. We're doing a, um, I think I might put a bit of white there because I bet the sun would hit that. There. Um, we're going to do a craft along, aren't we? Do you remember the Lino Cuts? Wednesday, 7 p.m., Facebook Live. Oh, look. This is going to look good when it's done. Um, Facebook Live, 7 o'clock tonight. We're doing the um, part two of the lino cuts. We've already had a good crafting session with them. Let's have a look. I'm in the, I'm in the zone here at the moment. Right. I've got... What have I got here? I'm going to go in with a little bit of grey in a minute, but I'm not quite there yet. I think I want to go a bit darker on the red. So it looks a little bit pink. So let's just put a little tiny... I'm going to the darkest red now. Yeah, have a look. Just in there, where I really want to... That's better. You know what would help as well? What would help is one of them... One of those blending tools. I'm going to I'm going to take up elocution lessons, I think. I'm sure that my English was better when I was younger. Let's take a cut. I knew I had a couple of these in here. Blending nibs. Blending nibs. We're waiting for the blending handles to come, but that is not important. What is important is the nibs. <laughs> there you see. So they work really well to blend the colours into one another so they don't look quite so stripy. Yeah, this is good. So you can use, think about the nibs as well. I mean, if you've got the handles, happy days. We will get them back in. We are waiting patiently, friends. You know, for some reason, the world seems to have forgotten that we're in the middle of a global pandemic. I feel, as a, a, I honestly, well, I don't feel, I know, the, the repercussions in industry are manifesting themselves now, not six months ago, not nine months ago, now. This is where the raw materials are not there. This is where the, the, the shipping containers are stacking. This is where people can't supply us with raw materials. This is where it's going to seed. But for some reason, unless you're in industry, you can't, you can't, people seem to think everything's gone back to normal. Got people barking at us because we're not fast enough. Well, we've still only got half the staff. You know, nothing's changed. It's quite, it's quite um, soul destroying because you're trying so hard to keep going. Um, and, and, you know, somebody had a go at me because we didn't have the blending nib holders well do you know what here's the really fascinating fact if we had them you know do you think if i do you think that if i couldn't get get hold of these if or if i could that i just wouldn't bother you know there is a crisis and it's not our crisis, it's a worldwide crisis. Everybody in industry at the moment is on, we're caving under raw material problems and supplies and boxes. And, you know, but for some reason, people seem to have forgotten that we're in the middle of a crisis. Right, that's my little orange box moment. I'm taking it all back. But that's why I wake up stressed and because we've really got big issues about supplies and, you know, right, grey now. Here we go. I'm going to go in with the light grey here. Let's do this, 
the pole. I nearly called it a stick then. <laughs> Honestly, just trust that we're doing our absolute level best. And if we haven't got the blending pen holders, there'll probably be a good reason for it. If you know me, I don't miss a lot of opportunities to get it right. Um, it's just what it is at the moment, okay? So, but the good news is my mum's still packing the nibs. So <laughs> even if you haven't got the handle, you can still get the nibs and you can hold them like that in your fingers. And until we get the handles, that is probably a great solution because they work really well for blending. Here we go. I think everybody's just got to have a little bit more patience. Don't you agree? There, that looks good. Right, now let's get some grey going, like we did here. So we'll put a little bit of grey. Now, this is going to be behind here. It's behind there. There we go. Just add a little bit of depth like that. That will tone it down nicely. What grey am I going to, I hear you ask? Uh, warm grey five. Any grey will do. There you go. But it just tones it down a little bit, so it's not quite so... It's supposed to be a 500, 600 year old tapestry. So unless it was wrapped in cotton wool for 500 years and didn't see the light of day, it probably would be a little bit, a little bit more grungy. Hmm? Yeah, let's get it a bit agey looking. Bit of grey. Let's take that light grey. What's this one? I might have to treat myself to a new one of these. Look at the length of it. Cold grey too. That's nice. Right, so, see, and now we've done that, a bit of grey over the white, so it doesn't look so horrible and stripy now, does it? And you could go back and forth between the white and the red and the grey until you're absolutely chilled, yeah? I mean, that's the, that's what this is all about. There, see? Nice. Now, where's that little nib? I can rub that. See, and the other thing is, of course, uh, you know, we can use the other end as well, especially if it's not in the holder. <laughs> oh, crikey. All right, there we go. Nice. Oh, I like. Now, that there needs a little bit of depth, I can tell. That's it. Okay, so we've got our flags. What do you think? They look quite good, don't they? This one needs a bit more work on it. Should we have a go? It needs a bit of grey, doesn't it? You can tell now. Now we've done the red in, in com completely, we need to go back, don't we, to the orange one. You happy to do that with me? Let's have a look. Because you can see here, see the grey? Let's do that now. And then we'll have a look at the clouds. Right, here we go. So you can come in here where you want the shades to be. Just take a grey. Lightly does it. Lightly does it. This is going to look good. I'm going to put a bit of grey in there. Really, I ought to be leaning on something other than my artwork. Barbara, that's better. There, that looks good. Put grey in there. Put grey over there. And in there. Hmm. I need a lighter grey. See that one there, if you don't. Yeah, that's it. That tones it down a bit. A little bit of grey up the top there would look good too. This area here. Just along there. Somebody had to sew these, you know. Mm. Have you ever been to any of those great big regal homes where you, they, you know, you take a guided tour and they say, um, 
I can't remember which one it was, but I can remember being in, I think it was King Ludwig's, one of German King Ludwig's places. And they said, um, <laughs> you know, 20 women spent 18 years. <laughs> I don't quote me on this, but, you know, it, it was like that. Like a team of 20 women spent 18 years embroidering the drapes with gold. And he slept there three nights. <laughs> You think the world has always been mad. Nothing's new, you know. <laughs> and he slept there three nights, you know. The one that I like, it was, um, have you ever been to King Ludwig's castles? There was one um, on the lake. What's that one called? Is it not a Kimsey? Eh? Um It'll come to me. He's got three of them. One looks like the Walt Disney, like Neuschwanstein or something like that it's called. It's the one that looks like the Walt Disney um, advert. You know the one? I think that's called Neuschwanstein, but I, don't quote me. I'm, my my memories. I'm good at this stuff, but not today. Today is not my day and I should have prepped, but I wasn't, didn't know I was going to talk about it, did I? Um, and then there's another one, and I'm not sure if it's the Kimsey, but there's a, there's a beautiful castle and it's like Petit Versailles. It's like Versailles, the French one. He, 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 King Ludwig, he was quite, um, uh, he was mad, wasn't he? They called him Mad King Ludwig. And um, he spent a fortune on these follies, on these beautiful castles. They got rid of him in the end. They drowned him in this lake around this particular one. And I remember there was this, like, this candle, like a chandelier room with the candles. And it used to take, <laughs> it was like the false bridge. By the time they'd lit all the candles in this room, the candles at the far end were already run out to go back to the beginning and start again. So there's always some poor sod always walking around while all the wealthy and, you know, but then again, he was only there three days. So how often that happened, who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it was a beautiful place. I mean, absolutely glorious. And uh, in south of, it's like in Munich, as I recall. I mean, I've been there. Now, and I'm just thinking, imagine, you know, some poor woman, while you're shading this in, some poor woman had to sew these by hand. They didn't have sewing machines, you know, and this tapestry will all have been done by hand, you know, sewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, now we can get a bit more yellow going here so that it's not so patchy. Yeah? This is going to look lovely. Okay. And I might add, it just feels a little bit... I need to add a bit darker orange in those, those areas. Pencils be gone. And then we'll have a go. Oh, we've got plenty of time. Good. We can have a go at the clouds. Do you fancy? Here we go. Just add a bit of that orange. It's going to look patchy, but hey, listen, these were signed by hand. Just remember, some poor woman, I'm assuming it was a woman. Some poor woman or man. No, I don't think it would have been a bloke. I think some poor lady would have finished these. And the hats and the coats, everything. Crazy, isn't it, really? No sewing machine. Hmm? My hand. That looks cool now. I'm happy with that. Have you got yours in place? I haven't done the pole. I need a light grey and a dark grey for the pole. Here we go. There we go. And then we're going to take a dark grey and go the other way. That look good. Mm, I like. I might even add a little flash of black just to make sure that we know. There. 
can always do this at the end. You know, when we get right to the end before we frame our work. There we are. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> hey, I like it anyway. I like it. Yeah. Oh, Starnberger Z. Is that what it is? It's the 125th anniversary at Lake Starnberg. Starnberger Z. Is it? Is that where it was? Oh, my memory. Right, let's do... Now, I want to have a look at the, um, at the sky. I'll do a little bit of homework about King Ludwig. Because the one in the lake, this is interesting, right? The one, the one on the lake, Paul tells me it's a Starnberger... Doesn't sound right to me though, but I will look it up. Um, he had this, <laughs> he had the dining room, right? And the dining table and um, all this Meisner, Meisner porcelain, beautiful porcelain, like ridiculous. These great big chandelier over the top of this dining room, right? And then he didn't want to see people. He didn't want to deal with the peasants and the people that gave him the food. So, so what he used to do, I mean, bearing in mind, he only slept there three nights. So this wasn't like a full-time job for the poor cook. Okay, they just had it all put in place. He, in his dining room, <laughs> I couldn't relate to this, but I, <laughs> I've been married to someone that would have liked this. Um, the, the table down in the, down in the dungeon where the kitchen was, they used to crank the table up right through the floor, all laid, right, so that he didn't have to deal with peasants like people i mean it's irritating really isn't it when you think about it no wonder they killed him right <laughs> no wonder they got rid of him so there's some poor bloke downstairs had to crank the table up and then he sat there waiting right at the first course crank the table back down again so he didn't have to deal with anyone none of this oh can i take your plate sir he must have just gone and then they had to wind it back down, serve in the next set, up it crank. I mean, you had to have arms like legs just to get this table up, right? Must have been four people down there doing this, right? Up comes the table, next course, down again, up, down, up, down. And he just sat there waiting for the table to be, not the, not the plates to be taken away, but the table to be dropped, reset and brought back up again. <laughs> I know. The world has always been crazy, hasn't it? Imagine that. <laughs> it's quite clever. But they never even stayed there very much, you know. All that work, all that engineering, all that money, all those curtains, all those candles. <laughs> Not a... Right. So now we've done that, I want to do the clouds. Now, to do the clouds, I'm going to come out a little bit. Out we come. And we'll have a look at what I did here. Yeah, this is quite nice. So what we're going to do, I thought about this, and I thought, well, a lot of you have got masks. So let's have a look at the masks. Don't worry if you haven't. We'll work out a solution. So these are our masks that we use. Do you remember when we did those in the craft along? Um, these are lovely, right? Now, where's the one with the basic? Right. So this one's pretty cool. It's got the castle. Got the castle. And the, this is what I'm after, is the clouds. You've got the mountains and the moons and the rooftops. And what we're after is the castle. Now, if you don't know what these are for, there are loads of videos and links. And perhaps Paul can give you the link to the craft along where we did this stuff. I did drag the artwork up to show you. See, this is what you can do with it. This is what we this is what we did. Um, do you remember? Put the castle in, and we put the deer in the reflections and that. These were the reflection ones. There you go. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, that takes me back. I enjoyed that session with the masks, but that set of masks has got cl clouds in it as well. So we can either do this. We can use this. Um, as a mask, right? So this is cool. See, so then you just pop them down like that and then you take your white pencil, a white pencil, 
take your uh, original out from underneath. I'm just showing you on scrap. So then what you do is you, you use it as a template like this. See, what's good about the mask is, of course, it stays in place while I'm working. So I'm going to just take my pencil line around like so. See? And then when I take this away, I'm, I'm, I'm playing for time here, so you've got time to go and get your masks. See, and then I can come in with my white... Where's that sanding block? Because I really want a flat chisel for this job. Right, flat. Okay. I mean, if you haven't got a sanding block, just do that for a little while until it goes flat. Right, and then what you do is, you see, you come around like that, and you... You use the, you use this mask as a, a kind of, you, ju you just colour till you hit it. See? And then when you take this away, you've got, you're starting to get a really nice, see? You don't take it away, I'm just showing you. But that's how you get that, this, this effect, this effect here. Now, so we've got masks, right? And Paul will give you the link if you want them. If you haven't got a mask, I used to make these masks for years, right? So you don't have to buy them if you haven't got them. It's not what this is about. The Shack Shack is not about that. It's about working things out and doodling. And I've said all along, all you need is a pen and a piece of paper. Now you need a pair of scissors and a piece of card, okay? This is just stencil card. And a good sharp pair of scissors. Now, if you feel inclined, you could always draw your your clouds right onto here but to be honest i i'm just going to stand up and i'm just going to start at this end and i'm going to make my mask I, I i i mean you really can color where's the pencil if i had a pencil that would be useful right so but i know what's going to happen i'm going to draw it and then i'm going to ignore it anyway but say what you're trying to do drawing wise you're just going to try and do something like this, right? That's all you're trying to do, if you like. And then you're just going to cut. You can't see that, can you? There. Look. So I've gone like that, like that, like that, like that. Every time I do this, I do it differently. Look. There. Now you see it better, right? But I'm not going to do that. I, I, I just know myself. If I... Let's have a cup of coffee. Let's have a sip. Let's have a look. All right, so what you're going to do, if you're not, you can either go and find your masks now quickly in your stash, or you're going to start just doing this. And then you click, then you go back into there, and then you come round. Let's do a little one. And then maybe we'll go up a bit. And then you come round and snip again. See? And then go again. Let's go down a bit. And then we'll maybe make it get in there again. And then we'll come up. Little one. Bit billowy one. And then we'll come up again. Like so. Look at what you're doing. That's quite good. Guess who drew these? <laughs> Look, same, the same. Can you believe it? It's just about the same. Look, Barbara Gray. <laughs> I don't believe it. That is a total coincidence. I'm telling you, that's a total coincidence. It's Isn't that funny? It's exactly the same as, <laughs> as the mask. There you go. Look, you couldn't. <laughs> I went up a bit higher on that one. Isn't that mad? Comical. Right, so you've got, or you've got that and that now, right? So you've cut that out of card. The thing about the, the masks, masks, is of course you've not only got the centerpiece, this bit that I've already lifted off, you've also got the outer pieces, haven't you? So if you're using these, then you, same thing, let me show you. You're going to pop this down. Now, the only thing I would say is this has to be stuck down because, you see, you need a bit of masking tape to decide where you're going to put it. 
like if we did this on here, say that's going to go there like that, right? You're going to have to stick that down like that because otherwise this is going to move as you're working. You see? And then what you can do is, right, so let's just pretend we haven't got a mask. We haven't got a mask for sale. Get your, you need a sharp white pencil for this job. <clears throat> sharp white pencil. Let's have a go. Let's just sharpen that pencil. I need a real tip on this one. That's it. That'll work. Nice tip. That'll do it. Right, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go in, but when you hit the, obviously, when you when you get as far as the, the flag, you're going to miss the flag. Give the flag a miss. And then you can come around like that and build your your clouds based on the back of your see like that you see that right so you've got your your cloud in place there and you've done one sharp pencil line around there like that and the reason that I've used card instead of paper is because it gives you more resistance when you're pressing against it. If you use a bit of copy paper, it's six or one and a half dozen of the other really. If you cut this out of a piece of copy paper, it's easier to cut out than the card. But then what you'll find is when you're going round it, you'll keep jumping into the cut into the paper. Well, how does she know these things? The, the mask on the other hand, it just holds because it's permanently, it works for some reason. I don't know, but there we are. Right. So, once we've done that, then we'll leave it in place. Don't, don't move it quite yet. Now we've done this, the sharpening thing. Now we turn it around, get the flat, get the chisel going. And now circular motions. And what you're doing now is you're just bringing in the, the whiteness above, above. See? Above this bit, like that. So you're going to... Circular motions like that, and then and then we're going to blend it away from the edge. So quite heavy down the bottom there, and then as we move away, like that, right. So we're going to work in layers on this. What you can also do, <clears throat> well, I don't know why I'm holding it it's tight. Right. So you can use your pencil, and you can you can hear it. Listen. You keep hitting <clears throat> the card, okay, and then you go in the opposite direction. So you're going that way with the pencil and then the other way with the pencil and then you get a nice, when you get to the flag, stop. Have a look. Yeah, see it's looking good. So you go, you see how you go along there? Right. Now I've started with this card one. I'm going to finish with this card one. This one I did with my with my masks, but it, they look the same. So, so let's have a look. So we're going to do this. Up we go. Go all the way along, hitting that card, hitting that card, hitting the card. Going to go into that area there. That's the cloudy area. So you use highlights and lowlights. The whole hour's been about highlights and lowlights, really, hasn't it? Uh, I didn't get to show you me pottery. Cool, it did come out nice. There was a couple of real corkers. I'll show you next week. Right, there you go. So in we go. So you don't want stripes. So you're going to use the flat of your... Might use a different... Use your finger to smooth it out a bit. Called a blending tool. Right there, you see? So you've got your pencil there like that. And then take that away for a minute. And then you're going to put another one in. So you could come in again, right? Move, you, move it along a little bit. And then you can't overlap them. That looks too weird. So let's say, for example, now, and you can use your... See, that looks pretty cool like that, I reckon. Uh... 
like that. So we can always put a little one inside. See, so that's going to be where the next one goes. But for the sake of argument, look, I'm going to take a light grey pencil again. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to, where's the bit that I cut that one out of? Is that it there? Yeah, there it is. See, so I could, if I wanted to, I could lay that over there like that now, because it's obviously the same, isn't it? It's what I cut it out of. And if I wanted to, I could use this as my guide to add the shadow now, the drop shadow, see? So I can do this with the masks, or I can do this, oh, that's a bit, yeah, that'll work. Right, so now I'm taking a light grey, and I'm adding the water, if you like, in the, let's have a look if this is, yeah, there you go, see? So now, so you use the other side, that works really well, Barbara, even if I say so myself. Right, so you take this, that I do, and then just add a little bit of, you need that flat again to get that in there. Just make sure you don't go over the white, because that will spoil it. So you get a bit of flat grey going in there. Doesn't that look cool, hey? So you, you see how you build up your colour? See, what's a good idea, though, is to do the white ones first, like I did here. Do the white ones and then go back, after you've decided where the white ones are, go back and then add the grey inside. Because that way you just get more balance. And then the other thing is, <clears throat> with the mask masks, rather than the cutout masks, but again, that's just a, it's a cutting out trick, you'll see... On this side they're larger and on this side they're smaller and the small ones they work really well I mean you do some and some but you could cut one out like this as well you know I'm not trying to kill sales here I'm just trying to show you so that if you do if you do this one here let's say we've decided we're going to put the white one in like this aren't we so it has to have it's congruous it certainly it flows right <clears throat> so so this one's going to be here, let's say, and, when, and we've done our white shading over that side. Okay, so we know where that is now, that one. And then the white's going to come in here, just as we've agreed. But let's say we want to put a couple of little ones in there, see, in here. So it's not finished until you've stopped. <laughs> there you go, nothing like stating the obvious. Right, see, so this is the white the white one in the background here. So there's going to be white clouds behind that. You see what I'm getting at? Behind here. Right? But then if I wanted to, there, see, like that. If I wanted to, I could take the smaller one, this one, or cut one out like this, and add another couple of little clouds in there like that. Or so you, you have to fiddle a little bit until it sits right and then you know, oh yeah, that looks great. Or in coming in from the side a bit, like there, see? So you might want to put another couple in there. Just, you just, you'll figure it out as you go around. You might put a couple in that one, just in there, like that. Just what's important is that they don't over overlap. That's the thing. See? So then you just put your pencil line in and that gives you your you can put them wherever you like I mean if you can do freehand mask uh, clouds and happy days you know there you go and then that one might come over here like that there see so I've got my so getting my mask in and then if, I, if I've decided, like, I don't like that one there, then I can take my pencil, my eraser, because nothing's written in stone, and I can take this one out. And it doesn't affect the artwork at all. See? So I take that one out, and I carry on. So this is a really nice way to do the, um, the clouds, I think. I think I might even add another little maybe up there do you see just a couple up there like there but this is something again that you need to kind of you need to stop get your clouds cut out 
get your masks out and then spend a little time getting them in the right place and do them lightly until you're happy. When you're happy with where the clouds are sitting in your tapestry, then go in with more depth. But don't rush it and don't keep going. If It's like, it's like everything. If, if, if you're not happy with what you're doing, then stop and change it. If you don't like it, change it. And that goes for most things in life. If you don't like it, change it. And um, if you're doing something, you think, no, I'm not really keen on this. It, it's only pencil. That's what the rubbers are for. Just rub it out and start again. And then when you're really happy and you look at it and you think, that is perfect. That's exactly where a cloud should sit. Then go. And, you know, the marvellous thing is not only will you be happy with what you, what you create, or you, you, you'll also have had a real um, a moment of accomplishment. It's that feeling of, yes, I can do this. And it looks lovely, you know. But the magic thing about working with pencils and doodling and not using ink, especially not in the clouds, um, is that you can, you can change it. It's your art. You can do what you like. Nobody's judging you, you know. And you just need to sort of sit back. And, and if, for example, like if I look at mine and I think, oh, hang on a minute, that looks a bit weird there, okay? Like this one's lovely and then this one's gone a bit woo-ah here. Well, if that's the case, I mean, I've got a white pencil and I've got, I've got, I can always, if I'm not sure about that, maybe I just want to make it disappear like that. There you go. So rather than, so I just draw the end of the cloud until I'm happy with it. And then it just disappears because clouds do that. They don't go, they, 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 they just float away, don't they? See, I, I think I'll leave that out there. Don't like that. Don't need that. Take that one out. In fact, I'm going to lose this one altogether. But it was me just trying to show you how you layer up clouds. But I might take this one and then bring this round because I can draw without a mask, say, and I might might bring that one round and then let that disappear. There you go. And then I'll be happier with it. See, so they're just billowy, big old clouds, and then they just disappear. So there you go. And this is going to look really nice when it's done. So on Monday, what we'll do is put your clouds in if you get a chance. Put them in where you'd like to see them. I wouldn't put any down here. Just at the top, I'd probably, I'd draw the line at about here. That'd be where, that'd be the limit really for clouds, this area here. Huh? And then, and then, yeah, and then we can put the grey in or if you get a chance, because I won't see you now. What's today? Wednesday. I won't see you till Monday. Maybe you'll get a chance to put the grey in. Hey, put the clouds in. Let's have a look. And then on Monday when we get together, let's start on the jousters. How does that sound? Good idea, Barbara. Thank you for your company. Now, let me see. Um, the, Paul's saying that the craft along was on the 19th and 24th of March. What? I'm not sure about that. Um, I'll have to look that up. The, the um, I've drawn a blank there. What we're going to do this evening at seven o'clock is the, um, is the, where's that gone? Here, the craft along with the lino cuts. Okay. So this is what we're going to do this evening at seven o'clock. So have these at the ready. And, uh, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a little look. We'll do some, we'll, we'll do something nice. We'll do a nice background. Um, we'll do, we'll, we'll put them through there. We've already put them through their paces. What you need is your distress oxide and we'll build a background while we're building a foreground. So we'll, we'll work on to get a selection of nice distress oxides going and, um, and get a paper towel or get a towel like this, just an old towel so that you can clean the stamps if you want to with a bit of water as we're going along. Okay. Sounds good to me. So I shall see you um, at seven o'clock this evening. And if you if you want to know when these things are coming up, when we're doing um, a shack shack or when we're doing a craft along, 
why don't you subscribe to our newsletter? Paul will give you the, the link and then we automatically tell you. We don't stalk you. We don't bombard you. We just tell you what's coming up. OK, like Sunday. Have I got television on Sunday? Yes, I have. Two o'clock till four o'clock. Lovely stamps. Yeah. So there you go. Like and subscribe and sign up for our newsletter, you know, and then you'll we'll stay in touch with you. OK, lots of love. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for your company. And, uh, and Paul, thanks for your help, too. OK, lots of love. Bye bye now.